Hello, uh, last class, in the last lecture we discussed the, the basic methodology of preparing or formulating a housing strategy. Uh, so, based on the, the based on this discussion, uh, today we will discuss that how uh, we take the strategy for a core city or a existing uh, city area. Uh, and the next day we will discuss that how the housing strategy could be taken for the new development, how we uh, deal the uh, new development and the uh, new lands or the vacant lands. So, so before we go to the, uh, the, the detailed discussion, let us uh, let me go for a quick recap of the yesterday's discussion. We told you that the, the housing strategy uh, formulation has seven uh, simplified stages. Uh, which we undertake and the housing strategy is the exercise which is taken uh, immediately after the master planning exercise. The master plan or a city development plan basically identifies the broad land and finance allocation uh, in a gross level and uh, that land and finance availability or the gross allocation can be detailed out in the housing strategy exercise where we are going to identify each land parcel uh, and their development based on the housing, uh, the future housing demand and each of, uh, of the land parcel will be detailed out on their development control, finance requirement and their uh, typologies of the housing which is, which will be prescribed exactly. The first stage of the housing strategy is the study for the existing situation. In the existing situation, we discuss that we study the land profile, the housing typology, the finance and the organizations by and large. The second stage is the visioning exercise. In the visioning exercise, we are we mentioned last day that we develop aims, objective and a broad vision of the, of the housing delivery or the housing provision for the city and this can be done in a participatory method. In the third uh, um, stage, we, we uh, discussed that analysis could be taken, analysis of the uh, land value, analysis of the trend, analysis of the land availability, analysis of the, uh, the, the, uh, the investment possibility, all this analysis will, will lead to the synthesis of the uh, all data, uh, so that we can mix, match and mix between the, uh, the demand, uh, uh, demand of the housing typology as per the different housing typology, the demand for the land and the supply, the how much land we have, how much finance we have and how much time we have. So, this can be mismatched and make a uh, uh, and synthesis can be done with a uh, available data. The next stage what we do is the making scenarios, we make different scenarios uh, to differentiate and to uh, compare between the scenarios, we take various parameters like investment, lands, uh, housing development, density, uh, if we are required, uh, the implementation, so many factors we take and based on the scenarios, we select only one scenario and one scenario, we uh, and based on that scenario, we make development and uh, various kinds of strategy for old city housing, new housing, a special type of housing, plotted group housing, cooperative housing, every category of housing typology, we make this strategy differently. And that is followed by the action plan. In the action plan, we mention the time frame of each typology of the housing and also we mention that who will uh, develop that particular housing delivery. So, this is the broad housing strategy um, uh, framework or the methodology we discussed. Based on that, we mentioned you that uh, there are two broad uh, difference in the approach or the uh, or in the context or the study area. One part you will find that in every city uh, there is a city uh, extent, a city limit uh, beyond which there are vacant lands are available. And before that, before that limit, the city is uh, having existing population, existing housing, existing buildings, and more you go to the center of the city, you find that the city is very much congested which is very old and the congestion sometimes we call, call it as a core city. So, core city uh, housing development or core city development is different than the development takes place in the outskirts of the city which is for the future new housing. So, that is why we need to discuss differently. So, today we will discuss the core city. So, the first point which we need to discuss is the understanding the core city importance. Now, you will find the, the older cities which are having a very core areas, congested and compact areas, those are evolved through time and uh, it has a history. So, it shows the city culture, city traditions and city's morphology that how the city evolved. And 
uh, its architecture, its road network, its people, its, uh, its style, its profile, everything is very important in uh, maintaining that city, uh, that, that, that the core city of the housing. Beyond the core city, we will find the second or third layer of the, uh, the housing development or the city development, which may not be that much compact, which, which, is, which may not be that much congested, but which is uh, having substantial housing development, substantial uh, developments are there with uh, fragmented vacant areas or uh, some vacant land. So, those are also very important because those kind of housing development came even after the development of the city or inception of the city, but it provided very important. Um, uh, land or uh, space for the, uh, the housing or the shelter for the people, but this needs a different uh, action or different uh, treatment. So, understanding the core city importance in its truest uh, sense, we cannot uh, mark a core city as a very congested one or a very uh, like a slum or like a shabby areas. So, we have to treat, we have to see the core city in its current context, current uh, morphological context, how it is related and how, how it is important for the city's core. Second is the uh, the understanding the issues. Most of the issues in the in the existing cities, existing built up cities are the infrastructure stress, because uh, the by and large the cities, the core city of the uh, uh, cities are developed throughout the time organically and organically developed uh, townships, organic de organically developed areas uh, lack fundamental um, infrastructure, because if the people come um, and build their house without uh, major road. So, over the period of time on a narrow road or a narrow width of road, you will find that multi storey building or very congested buildings have come up. So, as a result there are issues like congestion, there are issues like uh, like uh, infrastructure stress, there are issues like uh, severe crunch or severe uh, crisis of the infrastructure in terms of water supply, waste management or sanitation. But on the other hand, you will find that um, the potential areas or the, uh, the positive areas of the core cities are the its, its vibrant nature of the, uh, of, the, of, the, of the whole area, where you will find that people are playing, people are enjoying their space and people enjoying their uh, whole setting. So, that is the uh, kind of a, a mix match or that is the kind of a discrepancies we have to deal with in the, in the, in the core city core housing strategy. So, what to do? what to do with the core city housing. So, now it is it's the time that you have to uh, make a infrastructure assessment that how much infrastructure is presently there. So, some of the data you will find from the municipal office that these are the infrastructure level like the water supply uh, and the other facilities. So, you can assess the infrastructure level and you can compare that infrastructure or services based on some norms and standards and you can find out the existing level or the uh, infrastructure provision per capita or per family. Now, the, the question here, uh, now here the decision here we have to make that whether we are going to uh, further densify, uh, densifying this area or we are going to reduce the density of this area since it is a compact and since, uh, since it is a congested area. That is the very important question we have to deal with this core cities area. Definitely we cannot uh, give a blanket solution for the whole city whole um, city where this city has been already built up that either uh, we do not go for densification or, or we do not go for densification, definitely there are variations of the treatment. So, based on the treatment, we go for two types of major um, approach which is called as the the redensification and the redensification. In some of the areas we definitely prescribe for redensification, some of the areas we maintain the density and some of the areas we go for uh, de-densification that is reducing the density. So, to simplify the concept, we are calling it as a de-densification or redensification By name, you can understand the difference of their meaning. So, de-densification is basically reducing the density. So, here if we find that infrastructure condition is very much chronic, which is below the, um, the norms and the standards and not only that, it does not have a potential
to augment the infrastructure. For example, you will find that narrow road if the narrow roads are there in the old city or the court city housing you may not find the adequate space for widening the roads. So, how do you uh, uh, prescribe further density to in the narrow road. So, that is not possible. So, uh, assessment of the infrastructure is important assessment and at, after the assessment you have to see the assessment of the infrastructure and attends assessment of the potential to augment uh, the infrastructures. If both are uh, negative or the or the chronics or, or, or does not give you the suitable solution and suitable assertive responses, then we have to go for de-densification that is reducing, reducing the stress by reducing the density. But how do you do that? The usually uh, we do that uh, by using differential uh, FSI. Last in the last, last lecture we discussed the power of FSI. So, in the last to last lecture we discussed the power of FSI and its relation with the density and the um, and the infrastructure. So, more the FSI, FSI that more the floor area more the floor area is the more the uh, people living there and the more the infrastructure requirement. So, on the other hand if we reduce the FSI the number of families will be less number of infrastructure will be less, but how do you do that the one of the possible um, uh, solution is that we can provide a blanket solution of the minimum uh, FSI or we can provide a incentivize or disincentivize development in the core city uh, by encouraging the people to develop outwards. If this is the existing built up area and out of that this is the core city area which is much congested and beyond the existing built up area there are few more other areas where you have the substantial potential for the future development. So, one one approach could be that you reduce the FSI here, reduce FSI here and increase FSI here. So, that in the future development you can have more dense development here, denser development here and you can have the less denser development. So, that is what you can do, but one possible issue what you might face is that uh, that why uh, uh, people living there will accept a lesser affair. So, another method what uh, has been tested and experimented is using a incentive based mechanism which is called uh, transfer of development right. That means, you can transfer the affair from this place to this place. For example, the average affair in a city uh, say prescribed city is a 2 and here you are prescribed prescribing 1.5 and here you are prescribing 2.5, 2.5, but since the average FA, FSI is 2. So, that remaining 0.5 FSI I can transfer to some of the other plot in the outskirts of the city and we can go for 3.5, 3.0 uh, FAR in some other plot. So, transfer of the FA, FAR from one part to another part uh, by using my right to develop in the land with an equity that is also possible which is called transfer of development right. So, those kind of mechanism or tools and techniques can, can be used by the city authority to incentivize development in the outskirts area and to incentivize development in the in the core city area. Another part you can see that uh, that if the uh, after the assessment if you find that infrastructure uh, stress is there infrastructure stress is there but there is a potential to augment the infrastructure that means definitely stresses are there but with some intervention you can aug augment the infrastructure for example you can widen some part of the road you can uh, enhance the the capacity of the uh, the pipelines to uh, to reduce to increase the uh, the supply of the waters uh, drinking waters, uh, you can uh, widen the drainage uh, networks, you can widen the, the sanitary or uh, the sanitary sanitation or the sewerage pipelines and so on. And using this you can since you can augment to the augment the infrastructure probably you can go for de-densification. For example, if the current existing affair where the city is 
uh, course it is having a, a staying that is maybe 1.0 roughly. So, you can go for 1.5 1 or 2 or, or 2 based on your level of the infrastructure. So, from the calculation of the infrastructure which can be compared with the existing norms and standards you can prescribe that how much FAR could be uh, could, could be permitted um, uh, as a uh, as a redensification strategy. So, those kind of um, prescription is required at the core city level at the core city level and at the other points of the uh, other pockets of the lands in the existing city level. So, every each and every pockets of the land parcel need to be given specific proposal in terms of in terms of FSI and its uh, and its modalities that whether FSI is the is the uniform or it is the less or more or how you are making a balance into this. So, that is how you are making redensification redensification. Now, in the redensification exercise you will find that the already existing area you will find few more pockets which are developed outside the built up areas. So, in the redensification areas you will find in Indian condition that a substantial, a substantial area will be covered by the slum sense. and squatters. So, for slums and squatter which is basically a informal kind of um, um, development you have to have a completely different typology and um, strategy and we will discuss separately in some one or two lectures that what kind of uh, development option could be taken in the slums and quarter uh, squatter that we will take later on. But other than the slums and quarter there you will find uh, the organic housing. housing or traditional housing you will find purely plotted housing few group housing group housing and also you might find some um, group housing including private or public both plotted housing and you might find some uh, other category like rental rental housing. So, for plotted group and rental housing you have to have and the organic and traditional housing you have to have specific prescription uh, so that the overall improvement of the infrastructure and built element improves. Another important part is that the organic housing and the traditional housing uh, which are developed over the year and which is having the the traditional style of the city and the architectural style and archi architectural tradition which is bearing the, the culture of the of the population in that particular area. So, for those kind of uh, uh, area you have to have a mechanism of kind of renewal and conservation. So, we use the word renewal in terms of when you renew the area with the uh, with the augmented infrastructure with the augmented facilities and service so that people get uh, little more extra benefit out of uh, for the facilities and conservation is uh, is is mentioned when we want to conserve the existing typologies or existing pattern of the housing existing style of the architecture existing style of the culture or the craft in the uh, old city or the some specific livelihood option which is present in the in the core city you might find in some of the cities there old city housing which is which is part of personal which is extension of their livelihood activities or their cultural activity having typical uh, development scenario typical um, uh, typology of the housing having typical architectural character. So, those kind of uh, uh, housing typology need to be conserved. So, those is those are part of uh, renewal and urban conservation. So, we are so as a part of the your uh, uh, exercise you might uh, you might get some um, expert advice of the of the people who are developed who are specialized on that. But apart from that for other plotted housing, group housing or rental housing you have to take a call that whether you are going to redensify or redensify for the whole area. So, that is the concept we which we use. So, in this stage basically we have to uh, earmark the, the stages um, the, the, the pockets of the area based on the physical uh, boundary and 
on that pockets we have to identify the redensification or redensification possibility on a existing built up area. So, next stage let us see the next stage. So, in the next stage, so after prescribing the, uh, the broad uh, strategy about the infrastructure redensification and redensification, uh, you can prescribe the appropriate development controls based on the overall um, um, intention of the city, how you would like to see the city uh, for near future. Uh, so, in terms of the height of the building, in terms of the uh, color code of the building, uh, in terms of the various few other parameters which will basically define the city built up and city extent uh, that how the city will look like in the future. And to, to, en to, to do this you might have to uh, make some incentivize and enforce. So, now incentivize uh, what kind of incentives you have in your hand to make this either you can uh, enhance the FAR which we can we have told FAR or FSI uh, so that people build more in the desired areas and people build less in the in the in the areas which is congested and compact or you can incentivize by using differential um, pattern of of sanction fees or uh, the taxes different type of taxes that is uh, within the public authority which public authority can do that for certain kind of development they can waive off the taxes and the users fee or maybe the sanction fee. So, those are the incentive uh, incentivize or they can give some tax holiday for few years or say, uh, say 5 or 10 years something like that. And not only that wherever the even after incentivize or disincentivize uh, you need to enforce in enforce it uh, like uh, i tell you the example in some of the areas where you are finding that uh, the the areas are uh, developed but not that much uh, denser. Uh, you can go for redensification and you have prescribed uh, further redensification with additional FAR, but you find that people are not developing. So, th there, there could be enforcement or rules like that uh, any plot which is lying vacant for 2 years, 3 years or more, uh, the, uh, the more uh, sanction fees will be required or, uh, or government is no longer will give the permission for sanctioning the building. So, there could be a time limit for the development of the building. Secondly, after getting the sanction there could be a time li limit for the uh, construction of the building uh, for a given period of time. So, those kind of enforcement is also required by the government authority. So, uh, in this lecture we discussed uh, the, the how we deal the core city housing as a, as a whole. So, in the core city housing basically we discussed that there are uh, two broad uh, areas one is absolutely inner core areas which is congested congested and which is having the, uh, the the organic and the traditional housing areas and beyond that areas there are areas which is developed after the development of the city uh, and which is also a, a built up area already developed area but having a mix of compact less compact or medium compact areas so for those kind of areas we need to take different kind of um, uh, strategies so we discussed we started this discussion with the uh, with the essence of understanding the core city importance how it evolved its importance in the history uh, culture and the people how it is related with the history of the city and the region um, and to understand its uh, its its culture or its um, its essence in a current current context then understanding the issues most of the issues are related to infrastructure physical and social infrastructure we have seen that in in many cities the core city housing lack severe infrastructure in terms of the social and community facility they don't have the open space they don't have the uh, areas for children's uh, playing they don't have the areas for the uh, senior citizens to stay uh, to to sit and spend time so one of the major crucial um, uh, element in this exercise is that how we can augment those kind of community spaces apart from the physical infrastructure which we discussed. Then understanding and assessing the issues then the assessment of the infrastructure stage and holding capacity. We discussed that after the, uh, the assessment of the infrastructure condition at present you, we have to uh, understand that how much uh, infrastructure can be augmented for the future 10 percent, 20 percent, 30 percent or 40 percent. So, based on that augmentation uh, possibility which we are calling as a holding capacity that how much 
population it can hold based on the present infrastructure or the future augmented infrastructure capacity. So, that population we have to accommodate. So, if that uh, target infrastructure target population is less than the present population then we have to go for redensification or that uh, uh, holding capacity is more uh, than the current one then we can go for redensification and then we have to use the redensification and redensification concept we discussed that redensification and redensification can be applicable in different kind of areas we can use differential FSI uh, to incentivize and disincentivize to the development in the core areas and the new areas. The concept of TDR transfer of development right which is nothing but to incentivize people to develop more in the outskirts but less in the core city area those kind of uh, concept could be utilized. And then uh, prescribing appropriate development controls. Uh, by and large the development controls are we told that it is to define the building envelope, the building periphery, building volume. So, there could be specific development controls in the in the core city, in the uh, immediate outer um, region of the core city and the and the exterior part of the city. Uh, I take you uh, one example, the uh, the Indian cities which are developed through the ages historically you will find that most of the cities some of the cities you will find that developed around the temples or the religious spaces. So, one of the major development control is that based on the city culture we do not go for high rise development uh, which is more than that and the cultural um, elements including the temples and the and, and the and the mosque and the all these kind of structures in the core city but outside the city outside that particular core city area uh, they, uh, they they prescribe the more height and the more different kind of development controls so there could be a differential development controls in the core city immediate periphery of the core city the mid region and the outer areas of the new areas for the housing and we can incentivize and enforce enforce that development using different kinds of uh, tools and techniques uh, with the government authority. So, with this discussion um, uh, we can say that the core city housing strategy is by and large is a is a exercise of renewal and conservation some of the part of the uh, existing city we are renewing with uh, new or improvised infrastructure or improvised or uh, new uh, facilities and amenities and some of the areas we are uh, conserving or preserving and uh, since the culture and the core city is very much essence for the city and some of the part we are doing the both uh, like the renewal and the uh, and the uh, conservation. So, that is the info, uh, incentivize and the enforcement what we do and it may be required that as a part of the exercise you might need to take the, uh, the, uh, the help of the experts who are doing the conservation and renewal for the urban areas. So, the next day we will discuss the another very important part of the housing delivery which is absolutely different than the today's discussion. Today we have discussed how to deal with the existing built up area, existing core city areas. The next day we will discuss the new housing areas beyond the city core in the areas where there are uh, lot of vacant lands are, lands are available, lot of new areas are available, how we can um, suitably and, and meticulously plan all those lands and so that um, no wastage is there in terms of the resource like land and finance that is our objective that how we can meticulously plan the land and the other resource so that we can have compact city but sustainable city and sustainable housing. So, for today I express my thank for participation. Thank you.